What's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack, Simple Man's Comics, and we are back with another top 10 back issues for you to be on the lookout for. This is our favorite video. This is that ever-growing list we talk about top 10, but we always say each one of these top 10s are part of a master list, right? That's right. This is a living list. We're hitting you with these trends that we are seeing in the market and trying to alert you to some books that we feel like you need to add to your collection or you need to be looking at as possible investments for the future. The time is now. And let's get into it, Brian. We got another great list this week. New night, but same great heat. Yeah, so do us a favor, click that thumbs up button. If you're new to this channel, make sure you click that subscribe and that bell notification because we're always putting new videos out. With that being said, let's start off with number 10. Coming in number 10 this week, we're coming right off the gate with a twofer. That's right, we're talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 51 and 95. This is great issues. A lot of people are talking about this character not too long ago, but what do we got going on here, Jack? Well, of course, we're talking about Jenica Turtle, Jenica in general here, because Ninja Turtles 51 from this IDW run, that's the first appearance of Jenica. And 95 is when she becomes a turtle. And of course, she dons that mask later on in 97, all of it leading up to this epic run to issue number 100 and beyond, because a lot of people were skeptical that Jenica would not last. It looks like she is here to stay. I think Jenica Turtle is going to turn out to be Tom Waltz's kind of crowning achievement as the editor of the Ninja Turtles property under IDW. And we're very bullish about Jenica in general. Prices have really maintained during this entire pandemic, which is surprising. There are very few books where, you know, new modern comics where the flow of comics have stopped, but the prices have maintained. It's really reminiscent of Punchline and Star with DC and Marvel. But you got to really sit there and try to project the future. We still haven't seen Jenica show up in any sort of form of animated media. We still haven't seen Jenica show up in any sort of live action film. We still don't have Jenica action figures. There's so much that hasn't been done yet with Jenica, which will all undoubtedly cause spikes. This train really hasn't even left the station yet. So while those first print, first appearance prices may throw you off a little bit because it certainly isn't in line with what typical Ninja Turtles books do. This is not a typical character, and this is a book that you need to be paying attention to now. Next on the list, we're talking about that good old book from 1980 with that Moon Knight number one. Yeah, this book saw incredible spikes when word got out that Bushman would be the lead villain in the Moon Knight Disney Plus series. His first appearance is right here in this issue. But that's not even really why I'm excited about that, Brian. We know enough from villain television experiences that they come and go, right? So th that's not a reason I would sit here and make this a long-term play. For that reason, it's going to see action in the short term. It'll see some spikes as you get kind of close to casting, trailer, and all those other points that tend to spike books. No, nah, but the reason I like this book is the, f the fact the cost of the first appearance of Moon Knight has risen summarily over the last year, especially ever since D23 when we learned that a Moon Knight television series on Disney Plus was no longer rumor, but was reality. This has made that book really unaffordable, and this is one trend we've talked about consistently throughout this top 10 back issue series as books like that first appearance of Moon Knight become expensive and unattainable to some people, they are going to look for that other key that really solidifies Moon Knight to them within their personal collection. I think this 1980 classic from Bill Sienkiewicz is going to be the book that people are going to look at. The other thing is we've talked about ROI several times. The fact that this book at one point was trading for as high as $100 and is now regularly down to that $30 to $40 range shows you that there is – built-in meat on the bone left with this book. Yeah, it's just going down the rung of the ladder, right? You can't afford this one. So as the collector, they're going to pick up the next one they can afford. Yep. As the other person, the person wants to buy it and maybe sell it later, they're, they're thinking the same thing. Well, can't reach this one, buy this one. This is the next one that's going to increase in value. So I'm going to pick that up and sell it at a later date. Either way, still a great book. Like you said, first appearance of Bushman. Then coming in the next spot on the list, we have die number one from Image. This is a book that saw an increase, has come back down a little bit, but still a great one to have, still has plenty of potential as well. Yeah, a lot of people talk about movie scoops 
Well, you know what? Occasionally, Brian and I get those as well. And this was one we got tipped off to last year from one of our inside sources that Dai was one of the most talked about IPs within the comic book realm as far as Hollywood properties. Hollywood was looking for this book and wanted to do something with this book. We heard of strong Netflix rumors. Nothing was ever officially announced. And I think this largely has to do with the fact that the book went on hiatus. I think there was something cooking up. And then all of a sudden COVID hits and we lose all momentum within the comics industry. But have no fear. That's why I like this book and why this book is right here on the list. These slowdowns present buying opportunities. This was a book that was heading towards that $40 to $50 level, which has now dropped down comfortably to the $20 and below level, especially cover B. Cover B can be found as low as $10. I mean, we're talking first print. Beyond issue number one, there's a very early Peach Momoko uh, cover. I think it's issue six. This is a series that is just made for television. It really can be the next kind of Stranger Things type program. I don't know that that gets thrown around a lot. But the heat from this book was serious. I mean, very serious. And we've talked a lot about Boom Studios. And we've even been critical of Image over the last year. And the fact that maybe they haven't necessarily brought the titles and the quality of titles that we've seen of previous years. Die is the exception to that. Die was a home run in 2019. It's going to be a home run in 2020. It's going to be a home run in Hollywood going beyond that. And it's one to pay attention to because those prices right now are made for purchases. Yeah, you're talking about a great story, kind of like Jumanji meets Dungeons and Dragons. Then you're talking about gorgeous interior and cover art by Stephanie Hans. But that alone, that deserves a spot at number eight this week. The next spot on our list this week, we're talking about Marvel Tales. But more importantly, we're talking about the Ty McFarlane covers. We're talking about issues number 223 to 239, right? Yeah, and this is one that is definitely a pick for those of you who are chomping into bit to get back out there and dig. Because this is tough to go find on eBay, and this is going to be tough for you to find in a lot of secondary market sources. I think very much like last week's uh, Mirage Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles late print pick, this is a pick that I think really a lot of people have missed out on. Go check what the secondary market prices are for a lot of these books. Seemingly random issues, reprints of previous issues. But it's all about the McFarlane cover art. Todd McFarlane, when he did that CGC signing last year, the private signing got a lot of attention. It really brought to light a lot of kind of like overlooked McFarlane art because we started to see so many books sent in and so many new books got added to that census and population report that it really started to highlight different areas of the hobby. And this is one that really kind of piqued my interest, Brian. A lot of great covers, a lot of amazing art. You know Todd McFarlane hits me in the feels. It's right in line with my Mark Silvestri, kind of uh, Michael Turner, Rob Liefeld kind of era of comics. So I absolutely am a huge Todd McFarlane fan. A lot of these covers for a long time have been overlooked, but they've snuck up in price because Marvel Tales isn't a huge printed series. It's not a series that's been heavily collected. It's been overlooked. The reprints of major first appearances like, say, Vision or uh, Punisher, even those yeah. books. Plus, it was, yeah, it was just a book that was picked up to read and not really taken care of yeah. as a collector. Yeah, see, back then, Marvel was afraid that late printings would devalue the first printings. So they didn't want to do them. So instead, they did this way. This is the way they went about reprinting books. But this is really a cover art play. These are rarer than you realize McFarlane covers. So my big suggestion would be don't pay $10, $12, $13 dollars for these books on eBay if you're looking for resale. If you're looking to buy them for your, for your personal collection, by all means. But there are... Certain issues, there are very few listed. Certain issues are starting to creep up above $20. I think this is only the beginning of a trend that we're going to see continuing. My suggestion is when all of this pandemic business clears out and we get back out there hunting, hit those dollar bins. I know there are some sleeping Marvel Tales McFarlane covers hiding in those dollar bins. And that's why we wanted to highlight it here. It's time to liberate those bad boys from those long boxes. Right, and although we only have a couple covers up on the screen right now, if you want to see all the covers, you can see all the covers for these and the rest of this list over at SimpleManscomics.com. Then hitting us number six this week from Boom Studios, we're talking about Black Badge number one. Not only is it on this list, but it was also on our top ten Boom Blakes for that first look Netflix deal, right? 
That's right. And we already have heard strong rumors that this book is indeed coming to Netflix. And this is one of those no-brainers. We talked about this with Dad. Netflix is looking for that next Stranger Things. They're looking for that next property that's going to really strike an audience that not only connects kind of like the preteen to like teenage kind of crowd, which buys a lot of merchandise, as well as that adult crowd. And Stranger Things was like that perfect property, right, that melded both audiences. They're looking for that next one. Black Badge is a great opportunity. Here's my elevator pitch for Black Badge. You're talking about Boy Scouts that are extremely talented and are recruited by the government for secret missions. If you've ever been a Boy Scout, we all knew that one other Boy Scout, full disclosure, I was a Boy Scout uh, all the way up into my teen years. And there, there were always other Boy Scouts that you would look at and be like, man, that guy is just good at everything. He can climb rocks. He can, he can do everything on the lake. And what if those kids we're being recruited by the government. There's so many possibilities for that. There's so many uh, ways that that can be not just humorous, but, you know, dangerous. And I think if you've ever read the book, we're talking about Matt Kent, Tyler Jenkins, incredible book. And I think it's going to play out really well on Netflix. Then coming at the midpoint on that list, we're talking about number five. And we got that New Mutants number 14, which has first appearance of Magic. Well, yeah, we know New Mutants, the film, is coming. And from the trailer that we saw, the latest trailer, that kind, the one that kind of got everybody really reignited and excited again about this property, front and center was Ileana Rasputin, a.k.a. Magic. Now, we can spend so long debating what her first appearance is. There's like six different books that get brought up. But this book has generally been landed on as her first appearance as Magic. Magic is the character that she's known for in New Mutants and in X-Force. It's the character that I think is the most marketable. And you got to look at where we are in the MCU. We are getting into mutant times. I think if nothing else from this New Mutant movie, she is a marketable character. The actress they got to play her seems to be able to kind of portray this character very well, at least from what we've seen from the trailers and images. I'm excited for the possibilities. And the thing about this character is we've already seen the heat for this book many times over the last several years. And now is not one of those time periods. This book is down like most of the New Mutants keys. We've talked about New Mutants on the downside of three up and three down right out here on the Simple Men's Comics YouTube channel. Um, and I would expect to see that trend continue up until the point that this film is finally released. So there's a great window right now for buying opportunity. Be on the lookout for that New Mutants 14. And then reaching just outside the top three, coming in at number four, we have Transformers number eight, which also gives us what? The first appearance of Dinobots, right? Yeah, so this book has an interesting history. When the last Transformers franchise started, this was the book that a lot of people got hyped about. Everyone was excited for the Dinobots. A lot of people invested in this book. And then the Dinobots came. And this book did nothing. No one really got excited. The Dinobots were kind of poorly used. Not kind of, very poorly used. Um, almost throwaway characters in the Transformers original franchise. Now, we're rebooting. Everything's in new. So you got to start fresh. That in and of itself creates buying opportunities. So around the time of Baltimore Comic Con last year, when you and I got together and, and spent a great time in Maryland with both comics and chicken wings, but... Uh, that was one of the books I was paying attention to, and I actually picked up a couple copies for about $5 a book. I started to notice that book was showing up a lot of places. It's a book that I love, but I started seeing it on people's walls. And when I started seeing it on people's walls, and then I started noticing it in like $5 bin type boxes, I picked it up. I had thought to myself, well, I'm going to start stashing these away. And then something weird happened. Like the prices on that book have started to pick up. I don't know if people know something I don't. I don't know if the, if the Dinobots are going to show up in the very first new Transformers movie under this All Spark production, Paramount Pictures kind of banner. But nonetheless, this is a book to pay attention to. It's one of those like cult popular books within the Transformers series. There's not a lot of first appearances within Transformers you really need to be paying attention to. This is one of the few. Great cover um, and just a real big hit within the Transformers community. So I'm not advocating $20, $25 purchase on this book. Be on the lookout for this book in that $5 to $10 range. 
maybe they think Dinobots is going to show up in the next Jurassic Park movie. <laughs> that would be the crossover of the century, right? <laughs> IDW, hook that up. Transformers Jurassic Park. So coming into the top three right now, and at number three, we have first issue special number five from DC, which gives us that first appearance of Mark Shaw, but also known as who, Jack? Well, he's known as a couple people because he's known as Manhunter, and that's what everyone's paying attention to in this issue. But that's not why this book is on the list, Brad. This book is a COVID-19 special. It is made to be bought because of coronavirus. This is a book that was red hot right before coronavirus, and it really started to seem like DC Comics coming out of Leviathan, the Leviathan event, event Leviathan, that this was going to be a character to pay attention to. Because, of course, at the end of this mystery story by Brian Michael Bendis, it was revealed that Leviathan was indeed Mark Shaw. And then... We haven't seen Leviathan going forward. Now, there's been some solicitation teases where it looks like Leviathan is going to start playing into other storylines. We're going to start seeing him expand his wings as a villain in the DC universe. And I think that there's really unlimited potential because we've talked about this on the channel. You got to follow the money. DC put a ton of money into Brian Michael Bendis. With Dan Didio being relieved of duty and really a power vacuum within DC, I think that Brian Michael Bendis' voice is only going to get bigger and only going to get stronger. And you can feel how you want to feel about Brian Michael Bendis personally. But the reality of the situation is we can see the trend that's happening on the publishing side of DC Comics, and that's going to affect what is marketed and what's happening in the stories. We've been very bullish on Brian Michael Bendis' properties. I think that Leviathan, while maybe that story was fun, but didn't necessarily deliver how I think you and I would have hoped, There's no way that was it. There's so much more that's going to go on. We saw it with Batman Who Laughs where there was the introduction, a little bit of a lag, and then he got put into everything. I think we're going to see the same thing with Leviathan. And because of that, I think that this Mark Shaw book, Manhunter First Issue Special, number five, is a book to pay attention to. In our number two spot this week, we get that volume three of Astonishing X-Men number six, this also goes along with the three up, three down video we did this week where we were talking about Nova, but this has what? The first appearance of sword, right? Right. So I'm frequently asked by other YouTubers who talk about this show. And I'm asked if, you know, it's ever hard for me to talk about a book because it's a book that maybe I want to keep under wraps or I'm buying or a book that I think highly of. And I say, oftentimes we talk about everything. We're built on integrity and community. That comes first and foremost. But let me tell you something. This is a book that I like. And I'm just here to admit it. This is a book that I would love to be sitting here holding. It's a book that I'm paying attention to, but it's a tough book to find cheap at this point. We're looking 15 to $20 for the first appearance of Sword. Now, if you're not familiar with Sword and you're saying, well, what is this? You're essentially talking about an intergalactic a space shield. Um, they are the defenders of the galaxy within the Marvel Universe. And this is going to play a major role. We've already talked about how we're bullish on Nova Corps. But I've been reading some things about, you know, how Nova could play in to the Marvel Universe. And it looks like the Nova Corps could be a little bit of less important property because of the Snap and Thanos and Xander. We don't know where Nova Corps is going to play in. But one thing that it's rumored that is strong, and it's one that we've heard from, as we've mentioned, Mikey Sutton and Tim Vo from the Lords of the Longbox YouTube channel consistently. We've seen it picked up by a lot of, like, smaller websites. And... It's not just within that community. We've also seen this talked about consistently for a number of years that we're going to see Nova and what storyline. We talked about Annihilation Conquest, as you mentioned, on 3 Up, 3 Down, and that that storyline has been extremely popular. And all of it apparently is going to lead to this kind of like almost intergalactic version of the Avengers known as S.W.O.R.D. That is going to put this team front and center. And, you know, when you look at it, even at 15 to $20, which, again, I'm not advocating you to go out and spend 15 to $20 for this book. But it's still massively undervalued if we end up getting a team-up film titled Sword. I mean, this could be a $100 book. So the ROI for this book is there. It's just one that I would be paying attention to if you can pick up maybe in that 5 to $10 range. That's a book to keep an eye out for. Either way, great cover. Um, this is a, a big run, uh, a, a popular a popular run, Astonishing X-Men. If you've never got a chance to read it, it's one I absolutely suggest you check out. 
and it's one that could possibly be shaping the future of the MCU. Then coming in our top spot this week, we've been talking a lot about Star Wars lately, and so is everyone else, whether it's online, offline, in the comic book store. But this one, we're taking it back to where it started. We're talking about that 1977 Star Wars number one. Well, that's the thing about Simple Men's Comics, Brian. When they zig, we zag. So yeah, everybody's talking Star Wars, right? But everybody's caught up on who the next character is going to be that's going to pop. Everybody's looking at all these first appearances and they're trying to prognosticate the future with Disney Plus as well as whatever the next trilogy that they eventually will come out with in theaters. And when you look at the, the trend that we just talked about, we talked about S.W.O.R.D., you're talking about a property that, again, you're trying to project to a movie. You don't have to do that with this pick, Brian. This is a blue chip book. This is a book that is important in your investment profile because if you're going to take shots like Astonishing X-Men 6, you got to also hedge your bet with no brainer picks like 1977 Star Wars number one. On top of that, we talk about trends. It's the consistent point of this show. It's what we're trying to show you is how you can follow these kind of waves of success. Right now, there is a Star Wars wave. It's, it's undeniable. But one book that I'm seeing kind of ignored is this Star Wars number one. And as Star Wars gets elevated within the comic community, because if you're not familiar, there was really a time when almost the comic community wanted to reject Star Wars, where it was seen very much as not a comic property. And the same can be said for Transformers, G.I. Joe, uh, Ninja Turtles. All of these properties have had to fight that kind of sentiment and uphill battle but those days are behind us and now the comic books not only are popular as far as reader buzz picks consistently showing up on the bolo show and other various new comic book day lists but also the back issues have been gold lately with stuff like i mentioned from the mandalorian and everything that people are eyeing for the future of disney plus but you can't forget the book that started it all this is the first appearance of Whatever you want to say, Luke Skywalker. To me, what makes it more important, Brian, is the first appearance of Star Wars. It's just Star Wars. It is iconic. It is classic. It can only go up in value. I don't care how many were made. I don't care how many printings there are. Doesn't matter. This book is a classic. This is a book that can really only gain in value. And is one that every collector should have in the PC. And is one I think investors should really stop sleeping on. If you look at the prices, the same could have been said for issue number 42, the first appearance of Boba Fett, which was largely being slept on just a couple weeks ago. And now suddenly everybody wants. This first series from Marvel is filled with gems of issues that are just being overlooked as everyone chases the next new cool dark horse or modern Marvel thing. Yeah, I agree. And not to mention the cover's been swiped a few times as well, whether yeah, it's even Star Wars properties or other properties, but mm -hmm. classic book and deservedly so number one on the list this week. Now, we'll get into one other thing. You guys might be wondering, why is this on Monday nights? Well, it's a good question because we have new comics again. So this video series is now going to be on Monday nights. And what are we going to have on Thursday nights again, Jack? Well, of course, we are bringing back the return of the number one new comic book day show on all of YouTube, The Bolo Show. Debuting every Thursday night, The Bolo List, of course, it shows up everywhere on social media, Instagram, Facebook, SimplemansComics.com, everywhere you can find your comics info, and the show premieres on Thursday. We talk about all the great new comics all the books that are trending, all the first appearances that we have confirmed, as well as that AKA Mr. Bolo long-term pick of the week, that book that people are sleeping on and that we are eyeing for future success. You also might have noticed just this past week, we did bring back our other series. We're talking about that final order cutoff. We're talking about that last call show, letting you know about a lot of great books that are going to be coming out 21 days after the fact, but giving you plenty of time to get those pre-orders in. That's right. So we're talking top 10 back issues. We're talking three up, three down. We're talking the Bolo show. We're talking final order cutoff as well as those weekend theme top 10s. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you get notified when all of this great new content is coming from Simpleman's Comics. For Brian, I am Jack. This is Simpleman's Comics, and we'll see you in the next one. Dump in the jump for the shit. Up top when I speak, all cap with the speech to the cut up in the rapture. 
I'm so out of line with the phrase game. Just take a break, been a long day. Hit your line with your fog, do it with the light sticks. Maybe help me spark the ideas. We got nowhere else to go. It's only up from there.